Distortion has been around since before rock and roll made it famous. It began in the 40s when jazz and blues musicians would crank up their amps as loud as they would go to get a warm fuzz out of them. In 1951, uh, Willie Kizart dropped his amp and damaged it, uh, packing it full of newspaper before setting it up in the studio and recording what might be the earliest known use of distortion in the song Rocket 88. Jump forward a decade and Dave Davies of the Kinks got high and cut up his speaker cone with razor blades and poked holes into it, creating that unique sound on You Really Got Me Now. So Wikipedia says that this is all true, then what the hell are we doing here? Well, many, if not most, if not all, of those musicians who doctored their amplifiers and speaker cones for distortion are dead. And the ones that aren't certainly aren't making YouTube videos detailing what they did and the sounds they achieved. Many online forums argue back and forth over these anecdotes regarding distortion, with one camp firmly on the believer's side and the other saying that you're destroying your amp, or at least the speaker cone, for no good reason. I could not find another YouTuber who had up uploaded any actual evidence either way, so here we are. I bought a very cheap 15 watt amp. Uh, it's one of the ones that comes in a beginner's guitar set. And I put it through its paces to see if I could make an argument one way or the other based on actual evidence. Does damaging your amp or the speaker cone actually produce usable distortion? So before we begin, a little information on the gear that I use. I played an Epiphone Les Paul Studio directly into my sound card, and then I rerouted the recorded output straight into the amp. That way, the what's being played is always exactly the same. Uh, the amp was in a homemade amp closet. Uh, that should deaden any sonic reflections as the amp closet was designed to not uh, echo or reverb. And the amp itself was recorded by a Shure SM58 and nothing other than normalization has been added to the tracks. Alright, so let's get started.
So, what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, uh, originally I poked pinholes into the speaker cone, but whenever I recorded it and listened, listened back comparing it to the original, it sounded as if I had done nothing. And that makes sense. I'm, I'm not, I think the pinholes, they don't do anything. And actually, uh, in the video, there's an asterisk next to the uh, third sound that you can hear because I, I fucked up and I accidentally deleted the knobs at 10 with the original amp, but I just used the pins at 10 because it sounded exactly the same. There was virtually no difference. Um, of course, if you try pinholes in a larger amp or with more power, who knows what could happen. Uh, whenever I sliced up the cone, that gave us a good loud distortion, but it was very inconsistent, especially on the solo. Uh, the chords seemed to distort very well. Whenever I added the pins into the cone and left them there, it gave a very cool jangly metallic sound that was that's definitely unique and it lasted through all four different uh, samples. Uh, with the newspaper, it helped even out the fuzz, whatever fuzz was coming from the amp, but it also greatly diminished it. I had to normalize the uh, sliced, uh, sliced cone packed with newspapers. Uh, it was very, very, very quiet. Uh, whenever I cut out the pieces completely, uh, it it sounded very similar to the slices, but it had a more raspberry sound. It sounded a lot more like the guitar is going <laughs> the whole time. And the high end seemed to, to be diminished. Um, I thought that the most usable tone created by the amp was whenever I took the missing pieces out and packed the cone and the cab full of newspaper. That seemed to be a very, very nice tone that was very consistent across the board. Uh, whenever I fixed the cone by covering up the the slices with pa uh, not packing tape, painter's tape, it gave a very consistent tone. It was, I think, unique. It sounded like a very, very, very old speaker. But whenever it got to the solo, there wasn't there wasn't very much added there. And I would say that n for the solo, none of the None of the experiments, none of the none of the cuts, the pins, the slices, nothing seemed to uh, change the solos very much, except for whenever I put all the pins into the cone, uh, the jangly sound carried over into the solo, and that was pretty nice. Uh, maybe if you had more pins and a condenser mic, you even might you might get more jangly sound out of the solo. But yeah, so there you go. That's some definite evidence that cutting and damaging your speaker cone definitely creates distortion. I don't know if it's a distortion that you want. It's certainly not that epic tone that uh, some people are always looking for, but it's a nice thing, a nice thing to have and it's a, it's a different sound. Thanks for watching.